Hey everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I am doing a scrap buster today. I am going to make and show you three of my favorite pieces of ephemera I like to make with the scraps and things that are on my desk, and I'm going to show you guys a secret to you, but... Um, Anyway, we'll get to that in just a second. So one of the things that I really like to make when I have lots of little pieces left over from kits or papers and things are medallions. And these are um, simple, but they look cute, don't they? Circles, and I either layer them on a heavier piece of cardstock or chipboard or on just multiple punched out circles from scraps of paper so that they have some stability to them. And then these I put a bulb pen on. And then this one, this one has a bulb pen. This one I just added a little piece of twine. I did put a little eyelet. And these are just nice special embellishments to have on hand to go with um, different junk drawer tags and things that you make. Then I also did some layered stamps, but what I do with these is a lot of the junk journal kits and digitals and things have a page of stamps on them, but sometimes they don't, but I love layered stamps. So I made these just with scraps from kits that I had printed. You might recognize, in fact, some of these papers. This is my Fall Gratitude, um, one of the little square leaf images that I just cut using my, um, little Fisker scissors that are the stamp, and they're supposed to look like a postage stamp, but you could use a different decorative edge too, or even just some pinking shears. So anyway, they're from different kits and different things. This one, I layered um, a sticker, and this is one of those washi stickers um, from, from IB, and um, that's where I shared some fun videos with you guys about washi tape and some different stickers. And this was sitting in a pile on my desk, and this was one of the things they sent me. So I still have a good coupon code for 20% off everything in their shop and a link. So I'll put that in the description in case you guys want me washi stickers or washi tape or something. We'll use some of those when we craft together today. But that's where this mushroom... And that mushroom, isn't that cute? We're going to make little mini tags, too. This butterfly. Anyway, those came from that kit, this butterfly. So lots of fun with that. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to just make mini tags. And then these can get layered onto larger tags or other things. But I just think they're so cute. They're great to clip on the edge of a page or attach to a page. And a lot of times when I'm scrap busting, I'll just make myself a little template, and that's what I did here. So we'll make one of these, or I'll tell you how to make one, because that makes making some mini tags super fast. Like I said, this is kind of like a mass make scrap buster, so you can go through some of your scraps. So if a template interests you, all I did, and I'm looking through on my, on my, on my desk here to see if I have another piece of chipboard or something. I do, I do. Okay, so this one is, I believe, one and a half inches. Let's see. One and a half inches, and I made this one by two and a half, which is just kind of a fun size. So all you have to do, obviously, is cut your pieces. This is actual chipboard. Um, the other one was just a piece of cardstock, but we'll do this one and a half by two. And then I went ahead and I'm not going to be able to fold this one. The way I cut the corner on this one is I, I didn't crease it or anything. I just held it together and then just snipped to get the angle. And I think, and then it matches. And I think those look cute. I'm going to use this one um, to cut my new template off. Not that I can't use the one I'd already made, but Really quick, just making a template, making it with a little bit heavier paper or something um, might be good. But then you have it to cut out from a whole like stack of paper or something. So other things you'll need, get, get a punch, whatever size circle punch you wanna make your medallions and maybe some fun scissors. I may even use my pinking shears. These are um, a nice pair and they, actually cut a lot better than those plastic ones. Maybe we'll make some little faux stamps with that too. So this is the secret though. This is what I was going to show you guys. And, and again, no judging because we're all friends here, but I have um, piles. Ah! 
of stuff like this. And this is what happens to me when I start working with some paper kits. And then maybe I don't use all the pieces or I print too much. Um, or these are even from a book. I want to use that into a little tag. We'll make some of these into little tags. Um, but just pieces. And they're here. And I want to use them. And I need to bust my scraps, right? So, um, and some don't even really look like scraps. They just look like whole pieces of paper I never got around to. Not good, Pam, right? So, I'm just going to randomly pull a bunch of them out and these are from different kits some of them are my kits some of them are other kits um, that I work with and you can see a lot of my favorites I have a favorite on um, ah, I um, on my Etsy so you can go to my Etsy shop of course to see my things but I also have a collection for you of Pam's favorites and you can probably find most of these things there if anything interests you. So I'll make sure I link that in the description. But the whole point of a scrap buster is to not overthink. Just grab some of your piles of scraps that you have. And you can start making some things pretty quickly. So this is how I use this template. I just hold it. I don't trace or I don't worry if they're not exactly perfect. I didn't even do the top of that one, and isn't that cute? And again, this is just from a floral book page. My, You may say, Pam, don't do that. You're going to lose some of the pretty image. But again, my goal here is to show you how quickly you can end up with a fun pile of embellishments, right? To have on hand or send in a happy mail, using your journals you're making. See, it looks cute. Um, and, it, and you can move pretty quickly. So it's not quite tall enough. I'm gonna skip it. Whoa. And if you're not worried about lining the images up, and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second, depending on your paper, you can cut more than one layer at a time even, if that's something you are comfortable doing. So, let me get a couple more of these florals cut, and then I'm gonna decorate them and show you some different ideas. But again, this is, um, you know, the, the, these this isn't anything brain surgery, right? It's just super fun, super fast paper crafting, and it's very satisfying at the end of the session, of your crafting session. It really is to have this lovely pile of pretty things. So this is what I mean by if you don't care about lining up your images, let's just take these two pieces and I am going to, here, and the, these are some papers actually by Pink Monarch Prints. And I have a lot of their papers and I work with, I work with their papers a lot. So um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut through, I think I can cut through four layers. Again, not super, super duper thick paper. This is that 90 pound card stock that I like to work with. Yeah, we'll just stop at the four layers, but watch that so we we'll get all four tags cut at one time. And they're all gonna be cute and a little different depending on the pattern. And we can add stickers, washi tape, um, other fussy cuts, whatever to them. And then we have another stack. Again, just the way the paper, the size of the paper, I was able to get um, another eight or another four so now we should have eight if I didn't drop a piece of paper yep now we have eight and then let's just do two more since they're sitting here and I'm gonna kind of get that tag on this one so I'll do a little more cutting not have it lined up to the bottom but um super fast and look at all these mini tags I love I love tags and then again, depending on how, we have 10 of those now, depending on how we choose to decorate them, super quick and fun to have on hand and get rid of a few of these scraps. So anyway, I think that's probably enough tags for right now because we'll, we'll see how many of those we get to decorate. And then let's find some scraps that'll be good for making 
Um, that's already fussy. I already took the time to cut that bird out, so we are not going to cut him up anymore. And this is a tag. Okay, this is a good one. So it's not a stamp, right? But it could be. It could turn into a really cute faux faux stamp or just a rectangle. And like I said, I'm going to use these pinking shears. And I'm not the best at cutting things exactly straight, but isn't that pretty? And Somebody may say, Pam, that's not really a stamp, and it doesn't have, like, a number or a postage or anything like that on it. But they're kind of layered, cluster, faux, stampy. You could add, I have the rubber stamp set. It's the clear stamps, but that um, have postmarks. You could do that if you want to. We can make some that are a little bit smaller here, like square shapes. Um... You could find some little number labels or something to try to, you know, bring that kind of look in there. But I just, I just kind of like the shape of them and it doesn't matter to me that they don't have the postage marks on them. So again, out of that one little scrap piece of paper, I now have four fun faux faux looking stamps. I have these, I've already spent time cutting them out, but let's see if we could turn I'm not sure if we'll call this one a stamp, but I don't want to cut anybody's heads off. Let's see if I can make a nice and narrow, cute, let me keep that little pink flower. Again, not straight. You can tell that, let's crick it there, that's a little bit better. Cute, we'll turn that into something too. They're a little tall, but how cute is that? I'm going to use this for something, but I'm not sure what yet. And I'm, I'm, I'm reaching over here. Now, I love these. These are my porch prints, and it's one of their fall kits that I've been working with. And obviously, I did not take the time to fussy cut all of these out, but I like the images. So what I'm trying to decide is, would it be better to lay my my tag and make kind of a offset fun tag or just get out a circle punch and see if I can punch part of the image out. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, I need to pick up my regular scissors, I think. Just trimming this off so that I can have some reach there. All right, that'll be cute. This is a two inch circle punch and then we'll cut the pumpkin pie too. Chop it out. I think I want to come from a different direction and let's see what we come up with. Yeah, I wanted to have that leaf kind of in there. This punch works better if I'm not near the edge. It's a little close. Okay, so we can do big medallions, right? <laughs> These are much bigger than the ones I made. And then we can, and I'll have to cut some more circles to, to back these on. But let's do some that are that, I think this, is this the one and a half inch? Yeah, I did some one and a half, and I liked that size. So let's see if we can find oh, something. This will work well. So sometimes you have a bunch of these. I don't know if you're like me. You, there's one image you know you really, really want. <laughs> and then the rest just kind of sit there. All right, so we'll make a couple out of these. And I kind of want to do this bird right here. And that teapot's super cute, but I'm going to have to pick a different size circle for the teapot. All right, that one's going to be cute. And then, let's see. This is a one inch. I can make the teapot work. All right, so there. I get to throw that away. That's good. Get rid of a few things. And then, let's see. I kind of wanted, I want to find another piece to cut up for a faux stamp that, um, this will be good, that we can add a sticker or something to. Because you may or may not have, you know, you may your papers may be a little more solid or you have some stick, stickers you want to use. So let's make this one a little bit bigger and use this blue paper. I think this is from my aqua blue kit. Cute. All right, and then on the stamps, I layered them onto so that there's two layers. And again, I just went through that bin of scraps 
and found some paper that we can layer on. And I'm thinking, what do I have here? We definitely can make a piece of this work for our little children. So again, instead of cutting these out into the pockets that they were intended to be, I'm just holding my piece that I've already trimmed out on here so I get it approximately the size that I want. And you guys can see how I am not being super careful with anything I'm doing. But the end result looks really nice. All right, so we've got a floral background there. For these blue ones, maybe this piece that's sort of like newsprint, newspaper. Let me cut this out so we can get to it and see. And that'll be cute to back these with. And I'm just cutting these straight. You could, I could get the pinking shears out since that's what I used on these and cut them as well, but I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, we'll do this little one. Two more. Oh, and then the blue one. Okay. The solid or more solid blue. I don't think solider is a word. So I've got a list of videos and projects that I'm working on. I got a request not too long ago um, from someone who wanted me to show you guys how to make a, like using a lunch bag and make a little journal. And I have a video of a flip through of one I did years ago before I was really making tutorials, but I was crafting and putting up a few flip throughs. And it uses the um, Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady um, papers. And I am pretty much out of those papers, but it really made a special, a really pretty journal so I got online and found myself another copy and purchased that, and it should be here soon. So that video will be filmed soon, and I'm gonna use that paper, and I may use, may have to trim, I'm gonna trim this down just a touch so that it will fit on this backing paper. I wanna use the pink. Um, Anyway, I found a, a seller on Etsy and I used a few of her papers in one of my fall folios recently, but they're Edith Holden inspired. So in the same kind of color palette and the same kind of florals and things. So I may use a combination, but I'm excited about that video and that tutorial. I've been working on that one and I'm gonna use white lunch bags. You could use the craft color, but I'm gonna do white to be different. I use craft a lot and um, we're gonna try something a little different. Okay, I have medallions, I have tags, and I have faux layered stamps. So now let's decorate. And you see how quick I was talking to you guys and not completely focused. And the one thing I do need is I need to cut a few pieces of, I'm gonna get a piece of cardstock out here. Um, this one I have used to glue on the back of. So I'm going to just cut a few pieces to back these with to make them nice and sturdy. So I probably have some of these cut out somewhere. But we'll do one, two, we'll do like three layers. I think that'll be enough. So one, two, three, I need two more. I'm wondering if three layers would be better. I used, not chipboard, but cardstock on the other one. And I do like these to be nice and sturdy. So I'm going to have a third just in case I need it. And then everything's falling apart. For this big ones, I think I'm going to fold this over. See if I can make this go a little bit quicker. Let's see. And this punch likes when the paper's a little bit thicker. It just punches better. All right, so I have one, two. Three, four, nothing like watching somebody punch, right? But again, I'm using up stuff that otherwise I would just throw away. 
Another great thing to back these with, again, is junk mail and all those flyers and things you get in the mail. That would be a great option too. All right, let's work on the medallion since I have all these circles out here. And I wanna make sure that I stay on camera. So all I do for these is I am gonna use some wet white glue. This is the Lineco PVA brand. No, Lineco brand PVA glue. All right, this is gonna be our pretty piece. We don't wanna cover it up. And to, to glue these together, and then we'll decide if we're gonna do eyelets or brads or ribbons or whatever. All right, that's three layers. But this large one, I definitely want to go four layers. All right. I think that's going to feel good, and it's not bending. So it's all sandwiched together, and you want to let that dry really good. If you want to really make sure that glue is spread out in there, you can burnish it down. And let's do one, two, I think, here we go, three, and then the pretty top layer. And then these big ones will be ready to decorate. And again, I do use, I didn't need, I could have pulled out my pile of junk mail that I have. Um, I use that a lot to sandwich in between because you're not going to see them anyway, right? And then you can decide, you know, if you want the back to be plain. This one happened to have some print on it from a digital. All right, let's get out some ink. I'm going to use my Walnut Stain Distress Ink. And again, if you guys want to see some of the supplies I use, you can pop over to my Amazon storefront. And um, it's an affiliate link. Amazon does pay me a few pennies, no cost to you, but if you end up making a purchase. So if you want to um, look and see some of the things that I'm using, please feel free to do that. All right, so for this size medallion, it is the same thing. So let's, I don't know why I chopped up this little girl's face. It's making me unhappy that I did that. All right, we'll make that be the back piece. I don't know if you guys noticed, I kept flipping it over trying to figure out what I did, but that's okay. It's all right. She'll be okay. Now, depending on, again, if you get out a little piece of chipboard or if your junk mail is thicker, you may not need this many layers, but this is how many I am gonna use to make mine look cute. Got that off just a little bit, but I think with some ink it'll be okay. I definitely like that little bird. One, two, three. This one will just, we'll have to add a sticker or a word or something on here. But I think you saw on the prototypes that I did. One, I think I wrote the word love, and the other one I wrote the word peace on. I really like um, adding words here and there, too. All right, and one more. All right. And when these dry, they, they also get really nice and sturdy. So they're good to like add to the top of tags, dangles, those types of things. All right, I just realized that I didn't cut any for this teapot, but we're gonna skip that. It's the same idea. Whoa. And um, I've got one, two, three. I already have five to decorate. So we'll leave the teapot for now, or we could add the teapot to one of these it's smaller. I could put the teapot right there. <laughs> I might. Let's see. We'll see how I feel here in a minute. I may want to put a sticker on it. And you can always decorate the back too. So there's nothing to say you can't decorate the back as well. All right. So I think when we add the ink, these are going to look good. Nice. 
this is the one that I said I got off a little bit with my layers. I can always come back with my scissors and trim it up, but it looks okay. And then I love that flower. Is that kind of like a country rose or something? I'm not sure. If you guys know, let me know. And that's a good segue to me to ask you guys, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on with you. If you haven't already, also please subscribe to my channel. Yay. Okay, so these are cute just the way they are. They're cute with just a ribbon stapled or tied on. Um, again, we can make a little, you use a bulb pen and an eyelet and make a little dangle. I, again, you can get super creative with these. I think I am going to write on a piece of coffee dyed paper, which is good because that looks like a cappuccino or something, but I'm gonna write um, pumpkin. It's November, you know, we can still be thinking about pumpkins. Pumpkin, right there. That'll be cute and then we'll do something. Um, let me look at these stickers. Um, like I said, I'm glad I found these because there were all these little pieces of journaling paper too, but I, I think you guys know, I love a sticker that might be covering it up a little too much. Let's see, is this butterfly a touch smaller? I don't know. It's cute. We'll put it on there. And these are sort of that washi tape kind of paper. So they're a little translucent. I think you can see that. I'm looking to see where I tossed that bone folder. I don't know, so we'll grab another one. So yeah, you can kind of see the letters from the paper underneath. And then I'm gonna grab my scissors, flip it over, and just trim that little bit of that sticker off. Yeah, cute. So now I have a butterfly. And I think I'll be able to use some of these on some of those other tags. So we'll do like a, maybe a whole bunch of mushroom ones since it's fall and that'll be cute too. Okay, I think I am gonna put the teapot on the back of this just for the sake of putting it on there. Try to get it lined up so that the teapot, all right, that's the top of the butterfly right there. So I want the top of my teapot right there. Just because I punched it out, let's use it, right? Oh, it wiggled a little, but it's fun. Okay, little birdie. All right, let's get out our punch. This is my, y'all. I know y'all are sick of hearing me say, this is my broken crocodile. All right, I'm using the smallest hole because I'm gonna use some small eyelets on these. So I'm gonna punch a hole in each one and decide if I'm just gonna tie like a little piece of ribbon or something on here or, or put a bulb pin or what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a hole for each one. And then, we're gonna set it with this this guy. And again, even with adding all of these special touches, it can go pretty fast. And I have so many scraps, I think I could do this kind of crafting for probably a year, right? And um, still not use all of them, but that's all right. I will have made progress today, and that's a good thing. Look how cute, that's kind of like a rose gold. I love that. I think um, that color is really pretty. I'm gonna use a black one with this butterfly because I think that will look good. So I'm just using, I'm dropping them. I'm just using different ones depending on what the paper is. I a lot of times use just the ones that are the kind of the burnished metal colors and things, but this set has a few different ones. All right, I think I need to add ink to this and go ahead and glue pumpkin down 
so that I don't lose it. I'm trying to be responsible and close up my ink pad. There we go, pumpkin. And this is one of the reasons I like that line coat glue. If you, I don't know if you guys noticed, I was able to just kind of maneuver it just enough, just a little bit, where if I'd used my art glitter glue, it would not have budged. And not budging is a good thing too, when you need it to not budge. But um, it's, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of flexibility there. And to get it straight. All right, I'm using another one of these that are the rose gold. And these, you actually barely have to push these down to set them. They're really nice. Okay, so for the pumpkin one, I think the rose gold would look good. And I do have these kind of, it's hard to tell. These are actually two different colors of yellow. One is more of a yellow. And one is more of kind of an orangey gold. But we'll just use those. Because they are speaking to me. And I like that. Let's see if I can. One, so one's a little lighter, one's a little darker. I don't know if I have two of the same or if I got one that's a little different, but they're very close. Doesn't matter. Okay. That was successful. And I will put this away. I'll get it out of our way. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we did five of these. So the easiest thing, right, is you can just add a little piece of twine and be done, and it looks sweet. So let's do that for this one. And when I go to use these, if I decide, oh, I really wish it had, you know, a dangle or had a few numbers on there, you can always do that when you get ready to go use it. No matter what you add here, you can change your mind later. So that's one of the nice things about this too. All right, so you guys know I'd love a bold pen. So I'm gonna get out a black one for that one and we'll do gold for these two and maybe Kind of that metally color for the rose gold one. Now I have not gone through all my little bits and pieces to look to see if I have anything that will work for my numbers. So I'm probably not gonna spend a lot of time on this. But we'll do we'll do at least one with with a little dangly something. And um and then I can do the others later. Oh, all right, these will be cute to dangle. Um, I think that might be a little big. Okay, let's see, let's see how this does. So this is like just a little label that I'll trim out. And again, adding a little ink, we'll kind of bring it together. And I'm thinking, A lot of times I'll use my paper piercer to poke the holes to get these through, but since I'm just doing this one, I'm not gonna worry about it. I don't have like three or four that I'm trying to get through. And then I'm gonna tie a little piece of the twine here too. Just like to give it a little bit of texture. We'll see how that looks. Oh. Mm. So one of the things that I'm thinking about um, right now is getting my patron packages together. I've got a group A and a group B going now, depending on when people join. If you're not sure about what that is, it's on the Patreon website and you can support my business and get a happy mail. Um, and there's different levels and tiers. So I'll link that. I haven't done that in a while. I'll link that in the description in case you guys want to look at it. But I'm thinking about giving my patrons, I cut that a little short, the option in the month of December, at least at the $25 level, to get a, a, a mini journal instead of the normal little Patreon package that I do. So if you are one of my 
$25 patrons. Let me know if that's of interest to you. Um, it wouldn't be like one of my great big full-size journals that I sell for like $60, $80, but a smaller one um, to say thank you and Merry Christmas and all of that. And I could do just a regular theme or I could do like a holiday theme. So I think I'm going to put that question out on Patreon as well and maybe on my community tab on YouTube and see what you guys think. This is what I was looking for. So... Um, that's been on my mind last year in December. I did a envelope tag journal option for people that were at that $25 level. Um, my other levels, I have a 15 and an eight. Um, and I also am still offering free shipping on these. And so guys, my patron packages cost, depending on where the person lives, anywhere from, you know, five to eight dollars to ship so the eight dollar ones I keep under try to keep them under an ounce and just send in a regular envelope and it's just a few little things um and, and that can go in an envelope regular mail and then the fifteen dollar one I you know and the twenty five dollar I just have to be really careful um I try to maximize sending fun things but for the, the, since I'm already paying for the postage, but I'm gonna have to think about that for 2025 and how long I'm gonna keep that up at those levels. So if you have any thoughts or interest there, let me know. Um, again, by the time patron gets their fee and I make whatever I put in the package and then I pay the postage, I'm making maybe, I don't know, $14 on a $25 package. So I've really gotta think that through and if that's something sustainable for me longer term. Didn't mean to go off on a tangent on that, but I love doing it and I do think people enjoy it. So I've got to just give that a little bit of thought. I am not feeling inspired right now on what else to dangle on these. So I'm going to just put a ball pen on each one, knowing that I can later make them look fabulous. But they're cute just like that. Okay, so there's some medallions. Let's do these little shaped stump pieces that I cut out. I've probably already lost the backing paper for this one, but if I have, I'll just skip it and we'll do a different one. Wait, there it is. Okay, so I think all of them I want to be inked. This one I cut out with the little, um, the fancy scissors that supposedly cut it out in a shape that is a, like around a traditional postage stamp. This, these, I really like too, I did with my pinking shears. So hopefully you have something, some kind of fancy edged scissor. If not, just make them into squares, rectangles. Just use your regular scissors or tear them. You know, you could have the torn edge look. That would be cute too. All right, so those all have a little bit of ink. And then all I did on these was I did some different ribbons and things, and I just think it makes them look cute. I love, you guys know I love, this is that Sari Silk, just really natural um, color. And I'm gonna use it, I think, on all of these, just to show you again how quick, I didn't ink around the backing papers, which, I can do later, but there we go. Um, let me get this in my hand, and I'm going to use my little tiny attacher, and it's going to look great. Cute. And I'm not even putting any glue or anything. Again, later, if I decide that I want it to lay flatter or, or glue it down, I will. All right, this one, I'm going to put the ribbon kind of a little at an angle at the top. And I could go through my ribbon scraps and find some coordinating ribbons for all of these. But again, I'm just kind of having fun. Just moving quickly. And this is one of my go-to ribbons and I haven't used it in a while. I've been doing a lot of Christmas crafting. Yay, I love Christmas crafts. And I have some new, new ones coming too. Those, those are always in the works in the in the fall months heading towards Christmas. 
but um, I haven't been using this. And this would look really good with some vintage Christmas kind of stuff, wouldn't it? Hmm. I'm going to put this one, I think, to the top. I try to just do a few to the side, a few to the top. And even though they're different, like this is different papers, I just think they look cute. And they sort of coordinate with the ribbon. That was a, those are two tops. It's a side. Let's do this one. These long ones, I do kind of like having them come out the side. But I guess it could, there's really not a directionality, so it could go this way or this way. Okay, before I do anything to this one, it needs something. So let's see if we can pick something out that will look cute. I was hoping to find, um, here's a flower. Yeah, that rose is kind of fun and we can trim it off. It sort of brings the, the pinky from the backing paper. Is pinky a word? the pinks from the backing paper. Ah. Okay, there we go. Again, there's something about a sticker. I, you know, we t I asked you guys, and some of you commented, thank you, like what were some of the things you really liked to do and play with and uh, arts and crafts or whatever when you were kids and, you know, construction paper, stickers, crayons, you know, coloring books. I, I loved a coloring book, you know, all of that. But I have to say, you know, I was a 70s and 80s child and I had one of those, I think I told you this, a sticker book where you peeled the sticker off and you put it in the book and it was like a gl glossy pages. So then you could peel the stickers up and reuse them. And we would trade them. I glued that down. Ha! I wasn't even thinking. I said, I'm not gluing these. And I glued that one. Um, anyway, and I loved collecting stickers and playing with them and using them in things. But um, there we go. There's some faux faux stamps. Now I want to work on these little tags. I'm going to move these out of the way. So we've done medallions, we've done stamps, and now I have all of these fun tags. And again, depending on what you want to use them for, you could just leave them, like have a pile of these. Kind of like I have, I have one of my little containers here. I'll show you. I've shown you before, but just it's a bunch of circles that I punched out. I could have gone in here to get stuff to make medallions from. <laughs> but again, when I'm trying to get through scraps and things, sometimes I'll just punch, punch different shapes. And that's my circles of all different sizes. Um, but you could have a whole envelope or container or whatever of these on hand, these little mini tags that you haven't even done anything with. But then when you need them, then you decorate them to coordinate with whatever project you're working on. And I love these flowers. And I think all these need are like a little piece of ribbon. And I'm gonna look at my my little um, ribbon bag here because this green sort of goes, but not really. What about this green? Ooh, that's pretty. And I think this is against the sari silk. I think I have a if I know where it is, but I have a whole ball of this, so. Let's, I think it looks pretty behind there. Let's see how many I can do with this one piece of that I already have cut. See, just with that little piece of ribbon, it looks finished. I think we'll be able to do three of them. So, um, yeah, I like them at the top. Okay, very good. So the other thing that I'm excited about and I'll be talking about um, and giving y'all more information on is the collaboration with Rachel and Bella that Rachel and Bella is sponsoring, um, doing all the countdown to Christmas crafts kind of thing. Super excited. I'm on November 13th, but I'll talk about it and probably share a little bit more about it as we go because I'm right there in the middle of the month, which I think is great. And I'm really looking forward to the papers um, this year that she has. And they're on sale. I think they're all 50% off on her website. So I'll share all that information with you guys. And then, of course, when I have my video go live, you'll have all the information too. But um, that's another thing I have on my mind that I'm really excited about. And I have 
a few design team projects that I'm working on for a couple of people. Just fun, fun things. The beginning of a new month, I always have um, all kinds of ideas and projects and things ready to go. All right. I now the ones that have these cute flowers I'm not I don't think I'm gonna do but I think these that are I haven't even inked them all that are a little more plain I am going to see if we can't get several of these mushroom stickers out and do like a whole set I want this mushroom right here of mushroom tags I just think that'll be fun and cute and they are going to coordinate with this paper so there we go. And if you don't get it on completely straight, I still think it looks good. And if it had hung off, I could have trimmed it up. All right, I'm gonna leave the flowery one. I'm gonna add that one, that mushroom. All right, a butterfly. A butterfly might be cute too. Maybe we'll do a butterfly on this one. See how easily distracted I can get sometimes? <laughs> it's like, let's do mushrooms. Wait, there's a butterfly. Okay. Kind of the side butterfly. All right, now I am going to stay focused on mushrooms. All right, this is a different mushroom. So fun. And then a bow, a ribbon, something at the top of these. Add a little more ink to them. They're going to be super cute. All right, here's a different mushroom set. Let's see which one I want to put it on. I think it looks cute with that. All right, so this is mushroom number three. Let me see if there's another mushroom or not, or we may just stop. Very cute. Ah, look at that one. Ah, it, it, he definitely needs to be used. Put him right here. Well, I hope this gave you some fun ideas to move through your scrap pile. I have multiple scrap piles. The one I dug in today is my larger scraps, probably. Um, I have my mini scraps. I have, um, yeah, way too many scraps. I think I just did that one. I don't want to. I'm going to not repeat a mushroom. How's that? Ooh. I think I found another one. Yes. All right, that one has a very wide cap, but if I if it hangs off, I'll just trim it with the scissors. Um, anyway, I hope you found some good ideas. I hope you'll try some of these. I hope it at least got you thinking about how you can use some things that maybe um, have been sitting around for a while, like me. I've had I've had that bin with kind of things in process or with papers that I love and I printed and then just didn't get around to using at the time and they kind of ended up in that pile. So I'm gonna leave these like this. I'm not even gonna decorate these these few. This one is so pretty with those flowers on there. Um, and then later probably put a twine bow or ribbon or something on there. But I may just leave them and then when I'm ready to use them, they can get embellished some more. So, I don't know what all you guys can see here besides my mess, but we now have a really nice pile of ephemera, and I hope you like it. So, until next time, everybody have a great day, and thank you for watching.